In this screencast, we'll show how to create an application from scratch that can be, be deployed as a background worker on AppHopper. AppHopper will run any executables in each background worker that you provision to your application. So we'll create a console application that handles a task we'd like to process in the background. In this example, we'll be fetching tweets and store them in a RavenDB database. As we'll be working with tweets, let's create a tweet class. So let's just make this class public. And for the purpose of this example, we don't need to store a lot of data, so we'll just add a text property. And we'll add a Twitter ID, which we'll be using when fetching new tweets. As we'll be using RavenDB to store our tweets, let's install RavenDB with NuGet. And while we're installing that, let's go to the uh, RavenDB website. RavenDB is a second generation document database that, as we'll see in this screencast, is transactional and schema free. This makes the experience of working uh, with RavenDB very fluent and similar to a regular SQL database, except you don't have to worry about creating tables, rows, and so forth. In the tech part production on RavenDB, Oren Aini and Rob Connery walk through how to perform basic and advanced tasks in a series of screencasts. If you're new to RavenDB or want to learn more from the guy that created it, this production comes highly recommended. Now that RavenDB has been installed, let's Inst add a configuration file so we can configure the RavenDB database. AppHopper works by injecting a connection string called RavenDB with the appropriate values for use in AppHopper. The connection string you specify here can be a local host address, uh, which will be useful if you're running RavenDB yourself. You can get the, the RavenDB server from the RavenDB website. So let's jump back to our program and initialize a document store. We need to set the connection string name on document store to RavenDB. After the instance has been initialized, we'll need to call the initialize method on it. And since we'll be fetching tweets, uh, we'll need a library that can help us do that. In this case, we'll go ahead and use link to Twitter. We'll install that with NuGet as well. As you can see, link to Twitter doesn't uh, really play well with uh, the client profile of .NET Framework 4. So we'll just have to set the target framework to .NET Framework 4. With link to Twitter successfully installed, we can initialize a Twitter context, which will be used when making uh, queries to the Twitter API. And within the scope, let's initialize a session with our document store. And we'll use that right away to fetch our latest tweet that we have in our database. One thing you'll notice about Raven2B is that it works pretty much exactly the way you would expect it to. So I can simply use the link here to make a query to, towards the database, order by Twitter ID so we get Descending Twitter ID, so we get the, the latest one. And now we can make a search against the Twitter API. And we'll just make a query for app hopper related tweets. And we'll need to specify the since ID. 
by doing this, we make sure that we only get tweets that are newer than the ones we have in our database. So if we haven't made uh, any requests yet and haven't stored any tweets, the last tweet will be null, so we'll just specify that to being one. Although otherwise, we'll use the actual Twitter ID. And linked to Twitter requires a set of search type, with, which is an enum with a single member. Remember that the Twitter API returns the newest tweets first, so you'll probably want to process this recursively to make sure you get all the tweets. For now, let's just iterate over our results here. And let's initialize a new tweet from our the class we created before. And set the text to that of the result and the Twitter ID to the ID of the result. And now we can store the tweet in our session. The store method on our session operates purely in memory, so we'll need to flush the changes to the underlying database by calling the save changes method on our session. This also shows how RavenDB is transactional, as all operations are committed atomically with this call. The way AppHopper's background workers work is by running executables containing the solution. If the executable exits with code 0, the application is not restarted. If it exits with another exit code, we'll try and restart it. This program will just run and exit with code 0, so we'll need to make sure this application keeps running. We'll do that with a simple while loop. And to make sure that we don't continuously hit the Twitter API every other second, we We'll add this sleep after we've made a re request to the API. So we only make a query for new tweets every 20 seconds or so. With the application ready to be deployed, we will go over and prepare it for deployment on AppHower. And we'll need to initialize a Git repository first. And as you can see here, we have a lot of uh, files that we really don't want to be committing uh, to our repository. So in order to make sure that we have a lighter uh, footprint, let's just copy a git ignore file here that we can insert. And certain files will be ignored and not tracked by git when we make future commits. So you can see that the bin and object folders are ignored. And let's commit this in a pretty big initial commit. I recommend you to make commits more often. And to make sure the link to Twitter and RavenDB packages actually get uh, installed when the application is deployed to AppHopper, we'll just enable NuGet package restore, which is a new feature of NuGet 1.6. This way we can avoid uh, committing those binaries. And now we're ready to go over to AppHopper and create a new application. We'll copy the repository URL and add that to our Git repository. You can do most of this in the uh, Git GUI uh, if you pre prefer to do that. I prefer to use, the, use the Bash for most operations. And now we can provision the RavenDB database add-on for our application. And the add-on will be ready within a couple of seconds, so we can jump to the management console. This should be pretty familiar for you if you work with RavenDB locally before, because it's the same management console you would have there. And as we can see, there are no documents in the database currently which makes sense because we haven't deployed our application yet. So let's go ahead and actually deploy the application to AppHopper. It'll ask me for my password. And AppHopper is now receiving the code. We can see that the current build of master is now queued. Let's jump over to the management console here and see how the build is coming along. And we can see that it's started building it and now it completed it in a couple of seconds. 
You can always go in and see the details of a build log. And here we can see that the NuGet packages were actually restored. So we know that the necessary libraries are installed in this application. And the application is now deployed. So we should start to see tweets coming in and there we have them. As mentioned before, the Twitter API works by returning the newest tweets first. So this first tweet will actually be the newest one that was posted on Twitter. So to verify that this application keeps on running and the background worker works as expected, we can just try and delete this so that the newest ID that we currently have in the database, the newest Twitter ID that we have in the database, is one tweet behind the actual timeline. And we should be able to see it within 20 seconds. And there we have it. So it's verified that the background worker keeps on running. You may have noticed that we didn't actually configure anything to deploy this background worker. App Harbor just automatically detected that there was a console application and made sure that it was running in a background worker. And this is how they work on App Harbor. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll make good use of this new feature.